Oh, hi. Hi. Hey, this is Greg, Greg Guma, with um, another Maverick Chronicle. You know, in 1983, running for the election for the first time, Bernie Sanders got 52% of the vote. On Tuesday, Miro Weinberger got 57%. But it cost four times as much as Bernie spent. Well, it could have been worse. At least there were no television ads. You know, four years later, in 1987, Bernie defeated Democrat Paul Lafayette in five of six wards. And the progressives at that time were close to having achieved a majority. It was, you might say, the Democratic Party's local political eclipse. And now we may be having another one, a progressive eclipse. The Vermont Party remains a presence in the state legislature with elected officials like Tim Ash and Anthony Polina, but both were elected with uh, Democratic Party endorsements. It also endures locally with a city council block that represents the inner city and uh, low-income neighborhoods. And in fact, it just uh, gained one seat. Eclipse doesn't mean that a party disappears or ceases to exist. It isn't necessarily the end of anything, and certainly it isn't the end of progressive politics in Vermont. Far from it. You know, more than 50 communities this week just voted to send a message to Congress that corporations aren't people, no matter what the Supreme Court thinks. That's Vermont. But astronomically, an eclipse is an event that occurs when an object is temporarily obscured. It comes from a Greek word for abandonment, downfall, or the darkening of a heavenly body. Eclipses occur at times of syzygy. Nice word. That's a straight line configuration where the celestial bodies, the Earth, the Sun, the Moon, for example, are lined up straight. Too much information? Okay. Anyway, we may be seeing a political party in eclipse. Its presence and impact have been obscured, to some extent by outside forces, to some extent by its own trajectory, a progressive eclipse. But keep in mind, an eclipse is just temporary, just a phase. The sun and the moon continue moving along their celestial paths, and so will Vermont's political parties. So. All this has really been a plug. Not really, but anyway, Maverick Media, my website, has installments from a new ebook that I'm putting together on all of this. I call it, not surprisingly, Progressive Eclipse, Burlington, Bernie, and the Movement that Changed Vermont. It's kind of a sequel to the People's Republic. So go to vermontdigger.org or to Maverick Media, and you can read chapters from it or find out more. The book itself is coming out in the spring. But now, some insights from the wards after this election. Ward 1, Democrat Ed Adrian was the top vote getter, but he ran unopposed. Independent Karen Paul also was reelected without a fight in Ward 6. Now, for those who live outside of Burlington, which is, of course, almost everyone on Earth, these are two districts that cover the university and a wealthy neighborhood known as the Hill Section. So, there is that. Ward 2, that's between the hill and the waterfront in the Old North End. There, Max Tracy did well as a progressive. He had almost won in a previous race. This was also where Wanda Hines, the independent in the mayor's race, did her personal best. That turned out to be 15%. But the more significant thing is this. Hines came out with just 2 to 4% across the New North End and the South End, and that's where most of the city lives. Now, since the election, Wanda has decided to take off some time and regroup. Good plan. Progressive Rachel Siegel. She also won in Ward 3. Two wins currently constitutes a sweep for the Progressive Party. But Moreau was actually the top vote-getter in that ward. He had almost twice the number of votes as both Kurt and Wanda combined. 
Moreau also did well in Wards 4 and 70. Those are um, two more uh, conservative parts of the New North End. This demonstrates broad mainstream support. And also in Ward 4, a Democrat, Brian Albin, a history teacher, uh, succeeded Kurt Wright. The Republicans had just a single winner, Ward 7's feisty incumbent, Paul DeSalle. All this represents a setback for the GOP, the loss of its local leader for the last decade, and it is at the same time a big win for the Democrats. The progressives? Well, they're hanging on. Its three decades of executive power is over for now, but the party still has a mission and some new voices. One thing more. Wanda turned out to be considerably weaker than anyone expected. Kurt clearly had a ceiling on his voting appeal, sort of our Kurt Romney, and his height was in the sort of mid to high 30s. And Moreau turned out to be far stronger and far more determined than many skeptics predicted. You know, you could say he was underestimated from the beginning. In the caucus, Bram Kronikfeld was considered the favorite until he was out. In the general, people said Miro was an uncertain debater, a political neophyte. Both true, but ultimately both equally irrelevant. He was also learning and building the most successful Vermont campaign organization in many years. So, there it is. And this is Greg Guma with another Maverick Chronicle.